And I feel like all of us have been so maybe overwhelmed by how many foundation launches there are. Truly, like what's the point of trying to buy so many different high-end new launches when it comes to foundation when there's a $5 foundation? Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna be trying out a new brand that I just barely found out about. The brand is called Believe Beauty and it's exclusive to Dollar General. Every single thing in this brand is $5 and under, which is absolutely insane. If you guys don't know already, I have a passion for finding extreme affordable, high quality products. So I have a lot of high hopes for the products that are sitting in front of me right now. Believe Beauty reached out to me on Instagram a couple weeks ago wanting to send me some products and I had already heard about the brand and I was gonna go find a Dollar General and stock up myself so I could film with it. So it was just perfect timing. But they sent two huge boxes of so many products. I have almost everything in front of here. I have more than enough to create a full face of products. We have brushes, we have primers, foundations, concealers. There's powders, bronzer, blush, highlighter, a ton of lip products a ton of eye products. I seriously can't wait to try this out. So I hope you guys are excited. Let's just get right into it. I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the brows. This is the Believe Beauty Brow Defining Brow Pencil and they sent me the shade Light Brown. So that's what I'm gonna try to work with today. I love how there's a spoolie on the other side. I usually look for that in a brow pencil. So I'm just gonna brush it up first and then I'm gonna start on the end of the brow and start to fill everything in. This pencil so far has more of like a gel formula or like a pomade formula in a way, but just in pencil form. I'm trying not to apply too much product to the center of the brow because I feel like with this formula, it could be easy to kind of overdo it in the brows, but flipping it over and kind of brushing through everything with the spoolie is helping a little bit. Okay, so this formula is a little bit more difficult to work with than other formulas as far as brow pencils go, but I'm trying to make it work. It's just definitely like a very soft pencil, so it's kind of hard to get a precise shape with it, which is something that I personally like in a brow pencil when the formula is not so creamy and I'm able to really kind of build up. This is a little bit more difficult to work with, but I'm doing my best. Part of it could be that my brows are like unruly right now. <laughs> I really need to take a day to like groom my brows properly because that has not happened in a very long time. All right, we're gonna stop there as far as brows are concerned. And I think I'm gonna do the eyes first. I was debating on whether I should do complexion first, but usually when I'm trying a new eyeshadow palette, I like to do the eyes first, just so if there is any fallout, it doesn't ruin and all my hard work. So next I'm gonna go ahead and go into the Believe Beauty Your Covered Liquid Concealer. They sent me two shades. I'm actually gonna go with the lighter shade on the eyelid. This is in the shade Ivory. And I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of swipe that across the lids. And they also sent me their beauty sponge. I got it wet before filming and it is so massive. It like tripled in size. So this might be a little bit too large for my eyelid. Yeah, I have my other sponge available just in case I wanna use it, which right now I do on the eyelid. So I'm just gonna go ahead and blend that out with a sponge. After I received this box in the mail, I saw that a couple other people here on YouTube had already reviewed this brand. It's not a brand new brand. It's been out for a couple months now, but I haven't watched anyone else's videos on these. So I have no idea what people think of this brand or anything, which I guess is kind of good. Cause then you guys know that, you know, my opinions have not been swayed by anybody. I have no idea what people think of this. Sorry for all the noise. I was just taking off the seal on the Believe Beauty, uh, what do they call this? It's just their matte blur loose powder and it's just translucent. By the way, just so that I keep this video as short and sweet as possible, which is kind of hard when you're reviewing a whole line, instead of me looking up the prices of each thing and telling you guys here on camera, I'm gonna go ahead and have the prices listed next to each product that I'm talking about in the description box down below. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set the eyelids using this powder. Ooh, that feels like a really nice powder so far. I mean, obviously we'll have to wait and see how it works on the rest of the face, but my eyelids look really nice. All right, for eyeshadow, they sent over two different eyeshadow palettes. We have this one right here called Nearly Nude and this one right here called Plush Purples. I might dip into both just because I kind of see shades in both palettes that I really like. And I'm gonna take their all over eyeshadow brush and starting with the Nearly Nude palette, I'm gonna go into this shade right here. The individual shades don't have shade names, so I'm just gonna point to them, but I'm just gonna go ahead and apply that from the lash line up to the brow bone. So far, so good with that. Now, I'm gonna try this shade as our transition. This is from the Plush Purples palette. It might be too light, um, but I'm just gonna try it. So I'm just moving that back and forth using the Believe Beauty um, Blending Eyeshadow Brush. Yeah, I definitely don't think that that is deep enough to really do anything for me in the crease. It's definitely more of an all over shade. I'm gonna take this taupey shade right here in that same purple palette, and I'm gonna go ahead and start to carve out the crease with this, and let's hope that this kind of shows up a little better on my skin. Okay, yeah, that definitely seems to be working way better as a transition shade, so I'm gonna continue to build this up on both eyes. I actually really like that shade. I don't normally wear colors like this, but I actually really 
like that as a transition. I'm gonna dip into this brown shade right here in the Nearly Nude palette. It's a very reddish warm brown, and I'm gonna use that to create some definition on the outer corner, and then I'm gonna bring it into the crease just a little bit. These shadows are blending out really nicely. The formula is kind of similar to the CoverGirl eyeshadow formula, if you're familiar with those. They kind of have a unique, um, almost like poured look to them. I know that's kind of a weird way to describe it, but if you've used CoverGirl eyeshadows, hopefully you know what I'm talking about. And also when I dip my brush in them, there is a little bit of kickback. It's the same kind of thing that happens with my CoverGirl eyeshadows, and I really enjoy CoverGirl eyeshadows, and I find that they blend out really nicely, so I am actually excited that these are kind of similar to that. I'm gonna take the brush that we used in the transition area and I'm just gonna buff out the edges of that brown shade just to make sure that everything looks nice and blended. Okay, they sent over three shades of their Glimmer Pots Gel to Powder eyeshadows. The first one is this beautiful gold called Gold Flake. Then we have this bronze called Vintage. And then we have this really pretty color called Pink Quartz. I'm trying to figure out which one I want to do. Mm, we might have to try pink quartz. Maybe we'll dip into a couple. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this on my ring finger. Whoa! I'm not sure if this really picks up on camera, but it definitely has more of a ColourPop Super Shock Shadow kind of a feel to it, which is interesting. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that and let's go ahead and apply this all over the eyelid. It definitely feels really smooth on the lids and I really like that kind of pinky gold shift. It's a very natural looking shadow shade. It says it's a cream to powder, so I'm interested to see if it dries down at all. Okay, I'm gonna let that kind of dry down a little bit. And I normally don't really reach for eyeliner, but I'm very intrigued by this eyeliner that they sent. This is the Believe Beauty Metallic Liquid Eyeliner in the shade Dark Champagne. Here's what the applicator looks like, and I'm just really intrigued. I really wanna try this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply this across the entire top lid. And I'm just doing a little bit of a wing. As I apply this color, I feel like it's more of a reddish bronze than it is a warm champagne like it's described. But regardless, I do like the applicator on it. I feel like it's getting a little bit patchy as I continue to use it. But it was very easy for me to create those wings, which isn't always the case with certain eyeliners. So I did like how it applied and I like the wing that it created. I'm also enjoying the color actually quite a bit. So the Glimmer Pots are really pretty, but I can already see them creasing. That happens a lot with my eye shape. I'm gonna go into this shade right here in the purple palette and I'm just gonna take my finger and see if I can just layer this on top and kind of set it. I know it's gonna change the color a little bit, but that's okay. And I actually really do like this kind of taupey shimmer color and it's applying really nicely on top of that um, cream shadow. Then I'm gonna take this shimmer shade in the Nearly Nude palette and I'm gonna take that on a flat brush and I'm gonna try to kind of press that into the inner portion of the lid, kind of shaping out the shimmer a little bit more along the crease, almost like a really soft cut crease. Then I'm just taking a little bit more of that dark brown that we used on the outer portion of the lid, and I'm just adding that to that outer portion again just to make sure that that has enough definition. And I think that's where I'm gonna leave it for today. So next, I'm gonna take a Believe Beauty Charcoal Infused Makeup Moving Wipe. Whoa, interesting. These actually smell really nice. I've never seen black makeup wipes before, but I'm just gonna go ahead and take that and clean up the under eye area. There's not too, too much fallout, but there definitely is some. And I'm also gonna use it to kind of sharpen up the edge here on the outer portion of the eye. All right, let's move into complexion. They sent over two primers. This one right here is a hydrating primer and this one is the Stay Put Makeup Primer. I'm gonna start off with the hydrating primer and I'm gonna put this all over the face. It has like a blue tint to it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and apply this all over the skin. Oh wow, it feels very lightweight. And it doesn't have any fragrances added, I don't think. At least I don't smell anything, which is really nice. And I'm just gonna go ahead and apply this all over the skin. Ooh, this feels nice. I love a good hydrating primer. It really just helps with everything when your skin is super nice and hydrated underneath. So it says on the back of the bottle to allow one to two minutes to set. I'm wondering if I would be able to take a little bit of this other primer and kind of focus it in the T-zone. I'm gonna give that a go. This one has more of a peachy undertone and I just grabbed a little bit and I'm just gonna go ahead and apply this kind of in the T-zone. That's where I tend to get the most oily. That's where my makeup runs off first. So I like to focus more long-lasting primers in the center of the face. That one feels nice as well. 
overall, I was kind of expecting it to actually have more of a silicone-y type of feel, but it doesn't. It feels as thin and lightweight as the hydrating one. So I'm just gonna let that sit for a couple minutes. While I let that sit, I'm gonna show you guys the foundations that they sent over. Actually, they sent over a tinted moisturizer in three different shades. I am excited about this. This is their Skin Finish Tinted Moisturizer. I really wanna try this, but I'm not gonna try it in today's video because they also sent over a foundation, which I'm more excited to try. So this is what I'm gonna be testing today. They sent me three shades of their Skin Finish Foundation. Um, I have the shades Porcelain, Ivory, and Nude. Look at this packaging, you guys. This is only $5. It has a glass bottle and a pump on the top, which is wild. This is much nicer packaging than some of the most expensive foundations at the drugstore, which is kind of crazy. I'm gonna go ahead and try to see um, if I can pick my shade while I wait on the primer to set. Okay, I think I'm gonna go with the shade Nude. I'm just gonna go ahead and do one pump on the back of my hand, just like that. And I'm gonna use the Believe Beauty foundation brush to buff this out. So I'm just gonna take about half of the foundation off the back of my hand, and I'm gonna start to just kind of buff that into the skin. Let's go ahead and do one side of the face, just so that we can really see the difference on either side. So immediately I'm noticing that this foundation is really lightweight. It seems to have pretty nice buildable coverage and there's almost like a cooling effect that it's giving on my skin. So I did end up using the full pump on half of my face in order to get the coverage that I personally like, but it's a very nice, fresh kind of a finish. It blended out beautifully with the brush. So there's the comparison. Um, I am gonna go ahead and go into my sponge and just kind of press it into the skin further. I'm not using the Believe Beauty sponge. I just, you know, need to be honest with myself. I don't like sponges like that. There's just a certain material that I don't like to use. So it's more personal preference. I'm not saying that that sponge is bad in any way, but I just wanna use the one that I'm familiar with. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press that into the skin. Wow. I really like how that looks and the shade seems to be a good match for me. Let's go ahead and catch up the other side of the face. I'm gonna do one more pump. And I'm just gonna go ahead and distribute this all over the face. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and press it in with the sponge. I feel like I've been trying so many new products recently. I feel like there's always a lot of makeup launches, but for some reason right now, there are so many and there are so many to keep up with and it kind of gets overwhelming. But at the same time, I'm still really intrigued by all the new launches and I love when new things are affordable because that kind of allows us to keep up a little bit better with the new launches when it's something that is a bit easier to afford. So I'm excited to see how this $5 foundation wears. And I'm curious to see how it competes with the other foundations that have been released recently recently, a lot of which are high-end. So this will be fun. Wow, that is a really, really beautiful foundation. So far, I'm really liking how everything looks. It looks nice and dewy, but not too dewy. It also gave quite a bit of good coverage. So right now I'm really liking it. Let's go ahead and finish up the face. I'm gonna go into the um, Your Covered Liquid Concealer again, and I'm gonna take the darker shade actually called Fair. And I'm going to apply this underneath the eyes, a little bit on the chin and down the forehead. And I'm actually also going to go ahead and spot conceal on the blemishes that need a little more coverage. And I'm just gonna go ahead and blend that out with my sponge. Okay, so that concealer blended out really nicely underneath the eyes and over the blemishes. I'm really liking how everything is looking on the complexion so far. Let's go ahead and set that again with the Believe Beauty Translucent Powder. I'm gonna take my small powder brush first and I'm gonna press this underneath the eyes. I'm also gonna take some through the T-zone. And then I'm gonna take the Believe Beauty powder brush with that same exact powder. And I'm gonna take this all over the rest of the face. All right, so now that the complexion is nice and set, I'm gonna go back into the purple eyeshadow palette. And I'm gonna go into that shade that we used as a transition shade on the top lid. And I'm gonna run that along the lower lash line. I'm basically just gonna take all the shades that we used and kind of recreate what we have going on on the top lid on the lower lash line. I'm going into the reddish brown shade from the warm palette and applying it right along the outer third of the lower lash line connecting it to the existing shadows up here. And then I'm going back into the purple palette and going into that pretty taupe shade and putting that along the lower lash line. And then lastly, I'm going into that champagne shade and the warm palette that we used on this area of the top lid. And I'm applying that to the very inner portion or the inner third, I guess, of the lower lash line. Something like that. I'm just buffing everything out underneath using that same brush that we used in the crease and I didn't add any extra product to it. I'm just buffing out everything. And now let's go ahead and pop on some mascara. I'm actually excited to try this. This is the Volumin Eyes Mascara, obviously from Believe Beauty. 
and apparently you're able to build this up. It says you can do either one, two, or three coats. Three coats will give you the most voluminous lashes, so obviously I'm gonna do three coats. All right, let's go ahead and open this up and see what the applicator looks like. So there it is right there. It's not your typical brush. Look at that. Do you see the different shapes on it? And it's a plastic applicator versus like an actual bristle applicator. I usually prefer bristle applicators, but I'm not gonna judge this till I try it. So let's go ahead and start to apply this on the lashes. And again, I'm gonna do three coats. Ooh, wow, already my lashes are very nice and separated. So I'm gonna leave that coat there. I'm gonna do this eye. Sometimes it's good to leave your lashes to dry for about 10 seconds in between application. That way you can avoid um, as much clumping as possible. Even though I do like a little bit of clumping when it comes to volumizing mascaras, it's kind of a good way to minimize it. All right, I'm doing the second coat on the first eye. And now the second coat on the second eye. And now we're gonna go into the third coat. Wow, so that's three coats on the top, one coat on the bottom. I did get a little bit of mascara right here, so I'm just gonna wait for it to dry. But I have to say, I'm very impressed with this right now. I'm kind of picky when it comes to mascaras. I personally just know what I like when it comes to a mascara. And this has really given me what I like. Obviously, it took me some time to build up the three coats, but the result is really um, separated, but still voluminous lashes, which I really like. So that could be a gem out of everything we've tried so far. That is awesome. I'm just gonna brush off that mascara mark. All right, let's go ahead and go into bronzer. I'm gonna be trying out this bronzer. This is the In The Tropics Bronzing Powder, and this is in the shade Hawaiian Glow. Such a cute shade name. It has a little bit of a sheen to it. I'm not sure if it's gonna pick up on camera, but we will see how this applies. I'm just gonna go ahead and start to warm up the complexion using this bronzer. So I like to go along the cheeks, along the forehead, and in the hairline a little bit, under the lip, and I also like to go along the chin and jawline, and then bring it down the neck. So far that's blending out really nicely. I like the shade on my skin tone as well. Hmm. No complaints so far. I'm gonna go ahead and take the powder brush and just kind of buff over the edges. I like to do this no matter what tutorial I'm doing or what products I'm trying. Just keeps everything looking nice and blended. All right, let's go into highlighter next. They sent me two highlighters. Again, I don't think they sent me every single color of like the eyeshadow palettes and the bronzers and the blushes, I don't think. Obviously there's probably more in stores at Dollar General or even on their website. I actually don't even have a Dollar General close by to me. The closest one is like 45 minutes away. But next time I'm near one, I will go in and see kind of the full range of everything they have. I think I'm gonna go with this shade right here. Um, this one's called Champagne Kiss. I'm gonna go ahead and swatch it on my hand first though. I'm just worried that this is gonna be a little too deep for my skin tone, but then so is this one. This one's called Pink Pearls. It's really pretty. Yeah, that one's definitely too deep for my skin. So we're gonna give this one a go and hope for the best. Again, this is called Champagne Kiss and this is their Radiant Finish Highlighter. I'm just taking that on this little uh, dual fiber brush from MAC. And I'm applying that to the high points of the face. And I like to kind of bring it on the front of the cheeks as well. Wait a minute, this is looking very nice. Okay. And even though the shade is pretty golden, I think it is working decently on my skin tone. I was worried that it would be way too dark, but it seems to just be blending in, if anything. So I like to take it around the brow in kind of a C shape. But the thing I'm really liking about this already is it's not really glittery, but it gives an intense glow to the skin. I'm really liking this so far. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put this down the center of the nose as well. And on the cupid bow. Like, wait a second. <laughs> that is so pretty. What? I'm also kind of picky with highlighters as well. I know what I like, and this is what I like. That is so pretty. Uh-oh, folks, we might have found a new favorite highlighter. I mean, mm, don't quote me too soon on that, but this is beautiful. I mean, I can't deny that. Wow, I really like that. All right, let's go ahead and dip into some blushes. So they sent me two shades. These are their Born to Blush blushes. We have the shade Wink, which is like a hot pink, and then we have this one right here, which is uh, more of a shimmery shade. It's called High Tea. I'm gonna start off with this shade. I might have highlighted the cheeks a little too much, and this is more of a shimmery color, uh, but we're gonna go with it. <laughs> I like the peachy undertone of this, so I'm just gonna take my Flower Beauty blush brush, and I'm gonna smile and just apply that to the cheeks. Wait a minute, this is pretty too. Oh my gosh, it just makes your cheeks look so glowy. I would definitely uh, probably use this as a blush topper normally, but it made my cheeks look really nice and glowy. I'm gonna take a tiny bit of this hot pink shade because it's just a little bit more matte and I'm gonna add that into the mix just to kind of bring it all together and tone it down slightly. And then I'm gonna take the powder brush and just kind of press over everything just so that it all blends together nicely. Look how fresh my cheeks look. That is nice. I'm gonna take what's left on the blush brush 
and just pop it right here underneath the brows, right above the crease, just to kind of pull everything together. It's a very subtle way to pull everything together as far as your complexion looks when you have just a tad bit of that blush up in the brow area. Alrighty, let's see what's next. Are we already on lips? I think so. So they sent over three different liquid lipsticks. All three of these are really pretty shades. These are the Velvet Matte Liquid Lipsticks. We have the shade Honey Blush, this red color called Grenadine, and then this hot pink called Hot Pink. I might wear this one. I'm gonna set this one aside. But to be honest, I'm kind of mostly excited about their bullet lipsticks. I believe if I remember right, these are only $4, which is wild. But I love a good classic just bullet lipstick and I feel like these could be a really nice kind of addition to the look. You know what, let's go ahead and apply this lip liner first. Um, this is one of their long lasting lip liners. Again, they did send me three different shades in these. This is called Almost Rose and I'm gonna remove any foundation that got on the lips and I'm just gonna go ahead and line and fill in the lips with this. So the lip liner glides on really smoothly and it's really creamy at first, but now it's kind of drying down and it's becoming a little bit more tacky, which is a good thing as far as longevity goes, usually. Obviously, we'll see how this wears. And I'm kind of debating between two of the shades that they sent. This one right here is a little bit more rosy toned and this one is called Vintage Romance or there's Moroccan Spice, which is a little bit more of a warm nude. Maybe I'll layer them because <laughs> I'm never good at choosing lipstick colors. So I'm gonna go in with um, Vintage Romance first which actually is a really nice match for the lip liner. It's definitely more cool toned. Let's see if we can warm it up a little bit with Moroccan Spice. Oh yeah, I definitely feel like that helped kind of bring everything together. I really like how these feel. They're very smooth. Um, I don't know if they dry down at all or not. I don't think they do. It doesn't seem like a lipstick that would. Oh, it says it's a satin crushed lipstick, so it's a satin finish, of course. All right, let's go ahead and assess the situation. Um, I honestly am really happy with how everything looks. I'm just gonna take the bronzer brush and kind of reapply to the forehead as usual. The complexion looks so fresh. The one thing that's kind of throwing me off, I guess, is the eyebrows, but that's kind of it. I feel like I would have liked the eyebrows to be a different color and a little bit more um, defined, but that's kind of all that I am noticing right now. Everything else looks really nice. I wanted to maybe try this more peachy highlighter. Again, it's called Pink Pearl. And I wanted to see what that would look like as an inner corner highlight. So I'm gonna pop that in the inner corner. Yeah, it's definitely something that would be too dark to use on the cheeks for me, but I actually don't mind it as an inner corner highlight. It's kind of pretty. I'm also gonna pop that right underneath the brow just with whatever's left on the brush. Oh, they also sent me some glosses. Maybe I should put a gloss on top. Um, these are the Lustrous Shine Lip Glosses. We have Clearly Crystal, which is a clear one. We have a red gloss called First Date. And then we have this one right here called Ethereal, which is the one I think I'm gonna try. All right, I'm gonna apply this right on top of the lipstick. Definitely got all over the applicator, so I'm gonna wipe that off before putting it back in the tube. But I like how it looks with the gloss on. All right, I think everything looks the way I want it to, so let's go ahead and lock it in. Of course, they have a setting spray. This is the Makeup Perfecting Setting Spray. So I'm gonna go ahead and spritz the entire face with this. Ooh, the mist on this is actually very nice. I'm gonna take my handy fan. I'm gonna let that kind of dry down, and then I'm gonna go over and press everything down into the skin. And good news, they even sent over a brow gel, which is fabulous. It's just a clear brow gel. The specific name is called Eyebrow Styling Gel. I really like the small spoolie on this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run this through the brows, just to kind of give them a little more shape. That brow gel seemed to go on nicely. Obviously, we will have to see how it wears throughout the day. So with that being said, let's start our wear test. It is currently exactly 4 p.m. I'm gonna be wearing this for as long as possible. And you guys, like, I know I just finished my makeup, so usually makeup looks pretty good when you just finish it, but I love how the complexion looks. The eyeshadow looks great. The lipstick is really pretty. The mascara is really nice. We'll have to see if that smudges or flakes because that is the true test when it comes to a mascara. But honestly, so far, I'm really impressed. Let's just get right into the wear test so we can see how these perform throughout the day. So I will see you guys in my first check-in. All right, as always, for the first check-in, I'm standing by the window just so you guys can see what things look like in natural light. I actually love how everything looks. I think my complexion looks super fresh. The highlighter is so pretty, and I also usually don't 
always love super glowy cheeks. Usually when it's with cream products though, but since these are powder products, I just feel like it makes my skin look like I'm wearing creams, but I'm not. The mascara is really nice. I am hopeful about these products, you guys. It's wild to me that products can be this high quality now and be $5 and under. That's crazy. So I'm gonna continue to wear this throughout the day and I'll do more check-ins and we'll see how everything holds up. All right, so it's currently eight o'clock and I wanted to do a little bit of a check-in because my skin is starting to look a little bit oily in the T-zone, but overall, I have been loving how my complexion looks. I would usually powder the T-zone right about now because the nose is getting a little bit oily, but the cheeks look so glowy and I feel like my skin has a little bit of like that glass skin effect, you know, where your skin just looks glowy all around. But right now along the nose, it's a little bit oily. On the forehead, it's not quite to the point where I would need to powder it, but the nose definitely is. And so I wanted to do a check-in at the four hour mark to show you where things are at. Other than that, nothing's breaking up. I'm actually very impressed so far by how this foundation is wearing. It's kind of crazy and I feel like all of us have been so maybe overwhelmed by how many foundation launches there are, especially high-end foundations. And maybe all we had to do was go to Dollar General and pay five bucks for a great foundation. <laughs> We will continue to wear this and see how it goes for the rest of the day, but truly I am loving how everything is wearing. Um, I already ate dinner, so the lip color did wear off, but the lip liner seems to still be on there. So I do feel like it's a pretty long wearing lip liner. The eyeshadow still looks good. The mascara is not smudging or flaking. So that's where we are right now. I will see you guys in my next check-in to see where it all holds up in a few more hours. All right, you guys, so I'm back in the studio. It is currently 12, 13 a.m., which means that I've been wearing this for about eight hours. Okay, I'm just gonna come up close so you guys can see everything. The one thing that I'm noticing is, yes, everything looks a little bit more dewy, but besides that, nothing has broken apart, nothing has fallen apart. My complexion looked amazing today. I am floored by all these products, the complexion products especially. Usually this part looks way worse than this and usually it's settled into the smile lines way worse than it is today. And I even kind of like how the complexion looks now. I would touch up the T-zone just a little bit because that's my personal preference, but I actually worked out an hour ago. So I was sweating and it still looks just really fresh. Let's go through everything really quickly and kind of talk about my thoughts. First of all, we have the primers. It's kind of hard to know if primers are good or not when everything else is new on the face, but it contributed to this look. So I do feel like I'm gonna continue to use those. Plus the price is right on all of these. The foundation, you guys, are you kidding me? Like the packaging, the applicator, the formula, the finish of this. I'm going on a trip this weekend and I'm gonna bring this $5 foundation over so many of my high-end foundations. I'm totally bringing this with me. I loved how my skin looked today. It was so pretty and glowy and just the right amount of coverage, weightless on the skin. I am floored by this. Truly, like what's the point of trying to buy so many different high-end new launches when it comes to foundation when there's a $5 foundation that is better than so many high-end ones that I've tried? I'm not joking. I'm kind of a foundation snob and I know what I like when it comes to foundations. There's been a lot of great foundations that have been launched, don't get me wrong. I feel like everybody across the board has to create good foundations nowadays. I feel like the bar is just set really high, but the fact that this is five dollars and it performs so beautifully you can't beat that the concealer underneath the eyes seem to look pretty as well it's part of the complexion i don't have any issues with it so i'm going to continue to use that as well i feel the same about the powder the bronzer is really pretty i love the shade and i felt like it added to the overall glow i was beyond obsessed with that highlighter where is it this one oh my gosh the champagne kiss highlighter look at it on the skin all day long, I kept seeing the high point of my skin kind of catch the light, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is another thing that I'm gonna be packing with me when I go on my trip. So even though I love so many of the complexion products, like these two, I'm obsessed with. I felt like the blushes were really beautiful as well. I really loved the radiant cheek look using powders because I'm kind of weird about it with cream sometimes, but I felt like it really worked with the bronzer and then the other blushes that I used. Truly, you guys, I'm floored by this brand. All right, let's move into eyes. I felt like the eyeshadows looked really pretty. I actually loved the eye look that I created. I don't know why I don't wear tones like this more often. I normally do super warm tones and I just feel like this kind of taupey, more cool tone bronzy look, if that's a thing, looks really good and I'm just really into it. So I did like the formula of these. You know, if somebody were to ask me what the best affordable eyeshadow palette was, I don't know if I would say these first, but 
With that being said, they're really great and I really loved how it wore. I didn't experience any creasing or fallout or anything like that. So really good eyeshadows. It just depends on, you know, if you like this color palette or not. So I really don't have complaints about them when it comes down to it. The mascara had no smudging or flaking. So it was great as well. I really enjoyed it. The Glimmer Pots Gel to Powder Eyeshadows. You know, I feel like it made a really nice base for the powder eyeshadows, but I don't know if I'm obsessed with these. I'm gonna keep playing with them. I would prefer to drop like $5 on the ColourPop Super Shock shadows instead of these, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, that's not to say that they're bad at all. I just feel like I prefer something a little bit more intense if it's gonna be more of a cream shadow like that. Okay, what else do we use? The Metallic Eyeliner. I actually really like the color of it. Let's see if it lasted. I can't really tell. Okay, I don't know uh, how great the lasting power was of this. Now, I'm not sure if it's something that I'm going to remember to reach for, so maybe this would be something that I personally would pass on, but I did love the applicator, so maybe I would try a different color and see how I felt about it, but I did feel like it added something to this eye look. I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence about that one. The brow pencil for me is probably gonna have to be a pass. You know, I feel like my brows look okay, but I definitely have better brow products in my collection and just things that I prefer over a formula like this. So in my opinion, I wouldn't worry about picking up the brow pencil. Let's talk about the lip liner. Obviously all the lip products are worn off now, but they all wore off beautifully throughout the day. And I also love the texture of the lip liner. Like I said, when I was applying it, it's very creamy and then you can feel it set, which is really great. And I did feel like that helped with the longevity. I'm also a big fan of these bullet lipsticks. They're seriously so pretty and I'm really excited to continue to use them. They sent me some really pretty like red tones as well. I would love to try more of the red lip colors and I also need to try the liquid lipstick in another video maybe. Maybe I'll throw these into another like affordable makeup tutorial and I can try the tinted moisturizer in that as well along with some of the other things that I didn't get a chance to try today. I really enjoyed the gloss as well. I don't know if the gloss is anything revolutionary but I really did like this shade and I felt like it added to the overall look. The setting spray was nice. I felt like the mist was very very fine on it and for the price I mean come on you really can't beat it. Plus it added to the complexion and I love how my skin looked today, so I am going to continue to use that. As far as the tools go, I do feel like the brushes were actually really, really nice. I personally would skip on the sponge. I'm just a little bit picky when it comes to sponges and the texture of them, and this is not one that I personally would reach for. Overall, you guys, I'm so shocked about this brand and I get so excited when things are affordable and this specific brand makes me more excited because it's not just affordable, it's like cheap. But I don't wanna say the word cheap because the stuff is so high quality. But you know what I'm saying? Like it's so good for such a low price, it's wild. I can't wait to keep playing with these, especially the foundation. If there's one thing that I would say to run out and try because it's only $5 and it's amazing, definitely run into Dollar General and pick up the foundation. It is beautiful, the packaging feels really luxe. I'm like losing my mind over this. I can't believe that this is only $5. It really, like I have no idea how they did that. Before I go, I wanted to put a before and after so you guys can see what the makeup looked like when it was freshly applied versus eight hours later. I like to do this so you guys can see a nice comparison and it's also interesting for me to see. Again, I feel like everything is just a little bit more glowy, if anything, and usually it's really easy to touch up in the T-zone at the end of the day. I normally do, so it wouldn't look this glowy. But yeah, overall, I'm so impressed by this brand. You will definitely see me reaching for a lot of these products in future tutorials. Have you guys tried this brand yet? If so, let me know what you have tried and what your thoughts are about it. Let me know what your thoughts are about the foundation if you've tried it. I wanna know if we're on the same page about this. I'm kind of shocked. <laughs> If you're new here, hi, my name is Allie and I would love for you to join the family. You can do so by hitting the subscribe button. And if you're already a subscriber but you wanna be notified on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays when I upload, click on the bell after you subscribe and you'll get a notification every single time I post. Thanks again for watching my videos and thanks for always coming back to my channel. You guys are the best. I love you all so much and I hope you have a great day wherever you are and I will see you in my next video. Love you, bye.